What can you say about Hank Hill? He's a cartoon dad who has a narrow urethra, barely has an ass, his friends are idiots, and his son, well, he just ain't right. 6 a.m. and already the boy ain't right. Despite all those problems, Hank Hill is the beacon of hope for Rainy Street. Whenever somebody has a problem, Hank is there to fix it because that's what he does. He fixes things. He's a handyman with a master plan. You know, I think it would be easier to work with you if I had another beer. But the one thing he can't fix is his judgmental attitude towards things he doesn't understand, like Bobby's love for comedy, or other people's mental illnesses, or charcoal. You don't get the rich smoky flavor either. Shut your mouth. His stubbornness to comprehend things that fall outside of his comfort zone is really what his character is based around. And as much as he is an honorable, likable, and decent man, Hank Hill definitely has his flaws, just like everyone else. Okay then. Have fun. And as many problems as he fixes for his family, well, he's done some bad stuff too. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and these are the worst things that Hank Hill has done. Bobby, if you weren't my son, I'd hug you. Start puffing, boy. Hank and Peggy used to smoke when they were younger, but they quit because it was a bad habit and also because Peggy became pregnant. In the episode Keeping Up With Our Joneses, Bobby is hanging out with his best friend Joseph. They're rummaging around when Bobby finds a cigarette. Look what I found. Bobby and Joseph are tempted to smoke, and they run into a public bathroom to do so. But then, Hank catches them in the act, and Hank and Peggy give Bobby a stern lecture on the dangers of smoking. Bobby, smoking is a nasty, filthy, filthy habit. Instead of giving Bobby a reasonable punishment such as being grounded or doing some yard work, Hank decides the proper discipline is making Bobby smoke an entire carton. Dark puffin, boy. We gotta get through 200 of these. He thinks that making Bobby smoke more than he can handle will stop him from smoking forever. Yet that's not the desired effect that he earns from the predicament. Because of Hank's old-fashioned thinking, the result sparks an old smoking habit for him and Peggy, as well as a new smoking habit for Bobby. Hank and Peggy have a reason to smoke again, and that reason is to relive the good old days when they were carefree. That feels like, what, a hundred years ago? It doesn't have to. Because of Hank's punishment, Bobby became a smoking fiend and got addicted to cigarettes. Talk about an awful parenting call. Hank became blind to his son's health and well-being, all for the sake of trying to teach Bobby a lesson. We all know Hank means well, and his intentions are good, but this event literally made everybody, except for Luann, go mad and turn on each other just for one smoke of a cigarette. I'm begging you, put out your cigarettes and keep them out. Luann had to find a way to detox her family members, so she locked Hank, Peggy, and Bobby in a room all night. In the end, the detox worked. Isn't it the most beautiful day you've ever seen? Still, getting your son hooked on smoking is pretty awful. The charcoal ultimatum. We all know that Hank Hill works at Strickland Propane. Propane and propane accessories is his way of life. All other gases don't compare. Butane, forget about it. And don't even get Hank started on charcoal. You brought charcoal into our house. It's propane or nothing. And his loyalty to propane is probably nearly on par with his family. If propane was human, Hank would marry it. In the episode Hank in the Great Glass Elevator, Peggy and Bobby try burgers cooked with charcoal at Luann's cookout. They are delicious and we ate them all. They discover that they really enjoy the charcoal flavored burgers more than propane burgers. They also go to great lengths to hide the secret from Hank because if he found out that they were using charcoal, it would ruin him. Your father has got a nose like a Doberman. They don't want to betray him, but they also don't want to give up on good flavor. Peggy and Bobby even buy a charcoal grill in secret and keep it from Hank as if it's a huge sin. Going to great lengths to lie to Hank just for flavor is pretty nuts if you ask us. Luann asked me to hold it for her. I thought it was drugs. But truthfully, Peggy and Bobby shouldn't have to compromise flavor over loyalty or feelings. It's like Hank thinks that if you use charcoal, you're cheating on propane. When Hank finds out that Peggy and Bobby have been using charcoal, he gets angry at them and decides to let Peggy and Bobby choose between charcoal and propane, which is a pretty ridiculous ultimatum. 
When Hank offers Peggy two different burgers, one grilled with charcoal and the other with propane, he says, what's it gonna be, Peggy, charcoal or me? Which is better, charcoal or me? The way that he said it implied that if she liked her burger cooked differently, it was a betrayal and an insult to him personally. I mean, damn, Hank, just let your family eat the burgers that they want. You don't need to give them a crazy ultimatum. Well, I'll just drive this down to the dump right now. No therapy for Bill. In the episode Naked Ambition, Hank's friends get stuck in a mental hospital and they call Hank to get them out. First one to regain consciousness calls Hank. When Hank goes to pick them up, he tells Bill to get in the truck. Hank tries to pull Bill out of his therapy session because Hank, whose mind is kind of stuck in the 50s, views psychology and therapy as useless voodoo. Bill tells him no, he sacrifices his feelings too easily and that his feelings are valid too. My feelings are valid, Hank. I'm valid. It's true that Hank thinks for the entire group because his friends do stupid things and get in trouble all the time, especially in this episode. But in reality, Bill could definitely use some therapy. I mean, the poor guy is constantly depressed and even dips in and out of having thoughts about killing himself. It's hard for Hank to listen to Bill about being in group therapy because it's a difficult subject to deal with. But if Hank didn't pull his friend out of therapy, maybe Bill could be a better person and possibly even happier. It's understandable that Hank is uncomfortable with talking about his emotions, but he all too often tries to sweep emotional problems under the rug. And Bill is in desperate need for help in that department to a pretty tragic level. I guess I'm just getting in practice, huh? for the big long sleep. This isn't exclusive to this episode either. Hank constantly undermines Bill's emotional and mental issues because he's so uncomfortable with even discussing them. You must have confused him. Being dumped on is all Bill knows. It's actually pretty sad when you think about it, especially when he knows that Bill has been a danger to himself in the past because of his dark, depressed thoughts. Satellite dish trouble? No, I'm just up here to kill myself. Bobby's interests. We all know that Hank would prefer Bobby to be stronger and more masculine, and be interested in the things that he likes. A boy's room should be blue, I'm painting it back. For example, sports, propane, and propane accessories, and also hard work. But sometimes Hank's expectations are a little bit too high for his son. Bobby made a school team today without me even being the coach. I mean, Bobby doesn't have to like all the same things that his father likes. After all, he can be an individual with his own tastes, much to Hank's disappointment. In the episode Full Metal Dust Jacket, Hank and Bobby go book shopping and Hank tells Bobby he can get a book. So Bobby picks up a fantasy novel called The Elves of Evermore. When Hank finds out that Bobby is reading a fantasy book, he yells at him for reading fantasy novels and suggests that Bobby should read manly adventure novels. I told you to get an adventure book. But it is adventure. Granted, we understand why Hank wants to raise his son to be strong and masculine, but you gotta give your kids some slack to embrace the stuff that he wants, even if it seems goofy to you. He's stripping Bobby of his individuality and probably making him feel badly about many of his interests. Bobby, television. Hank hasn't even read the book and already he's harshly misjudging the content because he thinks it's corrupting his boy. Kind of like the time he rejected all of his music choices at the CD store because he didn't like the way the music sounded. This box is not to be opened until you are 16. If anything, this stuff is helping Bobby's imagination and his sense of wonder, and it's a book that Bobby is interested in. Reading is only fun if you read what you like. Anything about a boy with gumption should be fine. Hank may just want the best for Bobby, but maybe he should chill out just a bit. Reborn to be wild. We all know that Hank wants Bobby to act a certain way, and if it's not his way, it's the highway. And that is really noticeable in the episode Reborn to be Wild. When Hank sees Bobby rocking out to rock and roll music, wearing fake dreads, and having a good time, Hank overreacts and thinks Bobby is going to hell. You know what's not cool, Bobby? Hell. Acting differently than Hank in the Hill household is a big mistake, I tell you what. Hank forces Bobby to clean up his act and join a Bible study group. Bobby reluctantly does so, but finds out that the Bible study group is with a bunch of cool kids who love Jesus, but also all the fun stuff that Hank disapproves of. That was awesome! Thanks. 
but not as awesome as Jesus. Bobby realizes that he can still be an individual, love God, and make friends, which makes his belief in Christianity stronger than ever. But of course, when Hank finds out about the Bible group and Bobby's new attitude towards worship, he finds it perplexing. I was reading the Bible before that little punk was born. Once again, Hank doesn't understand Bobby's intentions and thinks it's sacrilegious to wear a shirt that says Satan sucks. As Bobby puts it, Satan does suck, so why is Hank so upset? Why not, Dad? Satan does suck. He's upset because Bobby is not learning Christianity the Hank way, the way he was raised as a kid. Hank forbids Bobby to hang out with the Bible study group just because they're full of tattooed skateboarders. You're going to church in a suit and tie like we've always done. It's here where Hank seems to literally act like he's holier than thou. Even Jesus had long hair. Only because I wasn't his dad. Once again, we see Hank trying to think better for Bobby, even though Bobby is making good choices. Why can't he worship God the way that works for him? Hank thought that his faith in Jesus was going to be just another fad for Bobby, but Hank doesn't know that. It's an understandable concern, but just because there's a box in the garage full of other things that Bobby used to be interested in doesn't mean his faith will be ignored as well. If anything, I would imagine the opposite is more likely to be true. Forcing your kid to go to a boring church without any fun involved seems like the thing that will be more likely to be dropped as Bobby gets older. I don't want the, uh, Lord to, uh, you know, end up in this box. Hank may not understand how things work with teenagers, but he could try harder. Bobby was learning about God, making new friends, and was turning out to be a well-rounded individual. Hank always says that his boy ain't right, but I think this time, Bobby was right. You think this is fun? He looks like a burglar. Slight of Hank. We all know Hank's thoughts on magic. Like Hank says, he lives in the real world and he has no time for tricks or imagination. Quote, if you ask me, you've got too much imagination. Well, if you ask me, you've got too much imagination. Everything's all loop-de-loops and flibberty gibbet. In the episode, Slight of Hank, Hank's marriage is put into jeopardy when Peggy won't reveal a magician's secret to him. I will never tell you how that trick was done. Hank says that he has figured out the secret behind Herrera's magic. He instructs Peggy to climb inside an empty crate so he can reenact the trick. But once Peggy climbs inside, Hank seals the crate shut. He threatens not to let her out until she divulges the secret. You're not getting out till you tell me. I mean, how petty can you be? Locking your wife into a crate just because she won't tell you how a magic trick is done is really immature and childish. Granted, it is Peggy and she's freaking terrible, but still. I think after Hank locked her in a crate, Peggy is justified in not telling him. Not to mention Hank wouldn't have told Peggy if an authority figure told Hank not to reveal the secret of the trick. The mystery of the trick sends Hank into a series of fits and shouting matches with his wife. Their marriage is in trouble all because Hank can't handle something as whimsical as magic. During the episode, he had to pick apart the illusions and destroy its mystery just because he doesn't understand it. She's got her legs pulled up to her chest. His stubbornness is really out of control in this episode. Pretty, pretty dresses. I know we already touched on this, but we have to go back to poor Bill. His wife Lenore divorced him a long time ago, and Bill can't seem to get her out of his head. I know this hotel. It's where Lenore and I spent our honeymoon. Lenore was everything to him. In the episode Pretty Pretty Dresses, Bill gets really depressed in the month of December because that's around the time Lenore left him. I dreamt that Lenore came back and stole Lenore. Instead of sending Bill to a psychiatrist, Hank thinks that's a bad idea. According to Hank, Bill is suicidal, not crazy. We've just got to watch him constantly until he snaps out of it. However, this type of thinking is not good because a psychiatrist really could have improved Bill's mood. And with the right amount of therapy sessions, Bill could have slowly learned to forget about Lenore and move on to another woman. But no, because of Hank's decision, Bill just gets worse and worse, and finally he tries to kill himself. Many times, to the point where he needs supervision from his friends. But I have to tinkle. Not on my watch. Then, Hank gets really mad at Bill because he doesn't understand why Bill is the way that he is. Hank tries to get Bill to snap out of his psychosis by wrecking Bill's presents that he got Lenore for a previous Christmas to get his mind off of Lenore entirely. But it only sends Bill further off the edge. I don't 
feel anything. Instead of forgetting Lenore, Bill becomes Lenore and starts to act like her and dress like her. Honestly, we really see how deep Bill's mental problems go here, to be dressing up as his ex-wife because of how desperate and lonely he is, along with his attempts at taking his own life, is wildly unhealthy. I've come back because I love Bill so much. But Hank shuns his friend because A, he's tired and annoyed with dealing with him, B, he thinks he's overreacting instead of struggling with genuine mental illness, and C, because he's just embarrassed by Bill's behavior. You stay away from my party. No party, you got that? If Hank gave Bill proper help in the first place, the situation wouldn't have gotten as bad. Yeah, Hank helps Bill find closure in the end by pretending to be Lenore, and telling him why she broke up with him, but that's a tiny band-aid to a huge problem. I don't love you anymore, that's it. I don't love you. It may have been solved, but for how long? What makes Bobby run? Hank loves football, and was even a football star back in his high school days. He even tries to get Bobby interested in sports, but most of the time Bobby is not very good at those sports. Bobby is not the athlete that his father wants him to be. I was thinking of taking some blind kids bowling. In the episode What Makes Bobby Run, Bobby wants more pictures in the school yearbook. He wants to leave a mark in his school career and forever be immortalized as a student at Tom Landry Middle School. So Bobby becomes the Longhorn mascot. Unfortunately, Bobby finds out that when the Longhorns win, the opposing team beats up the mascot. Halftime hammering, as in the McManaberry mascot massacre. Bobby obviously doesn't want to get beaten up, and he's portrayed as the bad guy. The entire school bullies him because he didn't want to get beaten up, and Hank and Peggy are so disappointed in their son. I've got to take my mind off of this. Hank is so excited about seeing his own son get the crap beat out of him for tradition's sake that it's kinda draconian. What kind of father enjoys seeing their son get hurt? No wonder Bobby was worried about getting attacked. He should be. A whole football team beating the crap out of you is insane. It's all good. It's all good. While Bobby gets the courage to get beat up at the end of the episode, Hank and Peggy cheer him on as if getting beat up is a good thing. Which is pretty messed up. What a great time to be a Longhorn. Now who's the dummy? If you think Hank enjoying his son getting beaten up just for tradition's sake was bad, there's more. Yeah, Hank loves sports and sometimes Bobby can't bond with his father very well because they hardly have anything in common. So Bobby tries to change that with an all-American athlete ventriloquist dummy named Chip Locke. My son is playing with dolls. There, I said it. Bobby hardly knows anything about sports, so what does he do? He researches and does his homework about every sport he can find in the newspaper. He works so hard to try to impress his dad with football statistics and facts about baseball, and it works, well, in a bad way. Hank pays more attention to Chip Block, a literal dummy, than Bobby, even though it's Bobby that has an interest in sports, and he's trying his hardest to bond with his dad. Hey, you called it, Chip. Chip's a genius. Hank thinks that a ventriloquist dummy is a better son than Bobby because the dummy is more interested in things he likes. That's pretty horrible of Hank to ignore his son like that. But everything works out in the end of the episode. Hank realizes that his actions were upsetting Bobby, so he makes a new dummy. And he bases the dummy off of Bobby because he loves him so much. Look at me with my two sons. Just another manic con day. We all know that Hank Hill and Con don't really get along so well. But in the episode Just Another Manic Con Day, Hank Hill finds out that Con used to consult for Wagner Grills. And Hank is interested in this little bit of information because Hank thinks Khan could help him out by making a propane robot, or probot if you will, for Strickland Propane's grill stravaganza. Khan, I want to build that grill. Will you help me? Khan agrees to help him out and they work really hard on the centerpiece for the event. But when Hank finds out that Khan has bipolar disorder, he convinces Khan to not take his bipolar medication just so he can help him make the propane robot for Strickland Propane's event. Listen, if you're not sick, don't worry about it. Hank tells Khan not to take the medication because when Khan is manic, he has tons of energy to work on the propane robot. Unfortunately, on the other side of his manic state, Khan has real lows. His depression gets in the way as well, and Hank is concerned for Khan, of course, but he really pushes Khan in his manic state to get the propane bot finished, just so he can impress Mr. Strickland and make the event fun. Oh, you're gonna cry? 
Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hank uses Khan as a tool, and it's kind of sickening, really. In the end, Khan does build a propane robot, but at what cost? His mental health. You can taste the pain. Khan may not always be nice to Hank. In fact, a lot of times he can be pretty terrible to him. But what Hank did is really messed up. You're looking well, you know, balanced. But what do you think? What is the worst thing that Hank Hill has done, in your opinion? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you haven't seen it, we've actually already done a Peggy Hill Worst Deeds video, so check that out. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. But most importantly, stay wicked.